From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello, welcome back to the Cube's coverage, Cube Virtual's coverage, Cube Digital coverage of AWS Summit, virtual online, Amazon Summits, normally in face-to-face, -face, all around the world. It's happening now online, follow the sun. Of course, we want to bring the Cube coverage like we do at the events digitally, and we've got a great guest that usually comes on face-to-face, -face. he's coming on virtual. Sanjay Poonin, the Chief Operating Officer of VMware. Uh, Sanjay, great to see you, thanks for coming in virtually, you look great. Hey John, thank you very much, always a pleasure to talk to you. This is the new reality. Uh, we both happen to live very close to each other, me in Los Altos, you in Palo Alto, but here we are in this new mode of uh, communication. But the good news is I think you guys at theCUBE were pioneering a lot of digital innovation, the AI platform, so hopefully it's not much of an adjustment for you guys to move digital. It's not really a pivot, it's just move the boat and put the sails up and sail into uh, the next generation, which brings up really the conversation that we're seeing, which is this digital um, challenge, the, the virtual world, it's virtualization, Sanjay, it sounds like VMware. Virtualization spawned so much opportunity that created Amazon, some say, I'd say. Uh, virtualizing our world, life is now integrated. We're immersed into, into each other, physical and, and digital. You got edge computing, you got cloud native. This is now a clear path to customers that recognize with the pandemic challenges of at scale that they have to operate their business, reset, reinvent and grow coming out of this pandemic. This has been a big story uh, that we've been talking about and a lot of smart managers looking at projects saying, I'm doubling down on that and I'm going to move the resources from this, the people and budget to this new reality. This is a tailwind for the folks who were prepared, the ones that have the experience, the ones that did the work. The Cube, thanks for the props, but VMware as well. Your thoughts and reaction to this new reality because it has to be cloud native, otherwise it doesn't work. Your thoughts. Yeah, I think John, you're right on. Um, we were very fortunate, you know, as a company to invent the term virtualization for an x86 architecture and the category 20 years ago and Diane founded this great company. Um, and I would say you're right, the public cloud is the instantiation of virtualization uh, at its sort of scale format. And we're excited about this Amazon partnership. We can talk more about that. Uh, this new world of, you know, doing everything virtual has taken that same concepts to whole new levels. We are partnering very closely with companies like Zoom, um, I mean, because a good part of this is being able to deliver video experiences in there, so we talk about that if needed. Um, cloud native security, we announced an acquisition today in container security that's very important because we're making big moves in security. Security has become very important. I would just say, uh, John, the first thing that was very important to us as we began the shelter in place uh, was the health of our employees. Ironically, if I go back to, um, you know, in, in January, I was in, in Davos, um, in fact, some of your other folks who were on the show earlier, uh, Matt Garman, Andy, we were all there in January. We didn't, I mean, this, the, the crisis already started in China, but it wasn't on the world scene as much of a topic of discussion. Uh, little did we know, three, four weeks later, fast forward to February, things were moving so quickly. I remember a, a Friday late in February where we were just about to uh, go the next week to Las Vegas for our in-person sales kickoffs. Thousands of people. We were going to do, I think, five or 6,000 people in Las Vegas, and then another 3,000 in Barcelona, and then finally in Singapore. And it had not yet been categorized as a pandemic. It was still kind of this early form of some worry about a virus. We decided for the health and safety of our employees to turn the entire event that was going to happen on Monday to something virtual. And I was so proud of the VMware team to just basically pivot um, just over a weekend to, entire, to change our entire event We've been thinking about video snippets. I mean, we have to become in this sort of virtual digital age, a little bit like TV producers like yourself, yeah. turn uh, something that's you know, going to be one day sitting in front of uh, an audience to something that's a lot shorter, quicker snippets. So we began that. And then the next thing we began doing over the next several weeks while we the shelter in place order started uh, was systematically first off, tell our employees, listen, focus on your health, but if you're healthy, turn your in, in attention to serving your customers. Um, and we began to see, which we'll talk about hopefully in the context of the discussion, parts of our portfolio experience a tremendous amount of interest um, for a COVID-centric world. Yeah. Uh, our digital workplace solutions, endpoint security, SD-WAN, and that trifecta began to be something that we began to see story after story of customers, hospitals, schools, governments, retailers, pharmacies telling us thank you VMware for helping us when we needed those solutions to better enable 
our people on the first uh, on the front lines. And all VMware's role, John, was to be a digital first responder to the first responder. Yeah. And that gave tremendous amount of motivation to all of our employees in doing it. Yeah, and, and I think that's a great point. One of the things we've been we talking about, and you guys have been aligned with this, you mentioned some of those points, is that as we work at home, it, it points out that digital and technology is now part of lifestyle. So we used to talk about consumerization of IT um, or immersion with augmented reality and virtual reality. And they talk about the edge of the network as an endpoint. We are at the edge of the network, we're at home. So this highlights some of the things that are in demand, workspaces, VPN provisioning, these new tools that some cases we've been hearing people that no one ever thought of having a forecast of 100% VPN penetration. Okay, you did the AirWatch um, a deal way back when you first started. These are now fruits of those labors. So I got to ask you, um, as managers of your customer base are out there thinking, okay, I got to double down on the right growth strategy for this post pandemic world. The smart managers are going to look at the technology as enabled for business outcomes. So I have to ask you, innovation strategies are one thing, saying it, putting it in place, but now more than ever, putting them in action is the, is the mandate that we're hearing from customers. Okay, I need an innovation strategy and I got to put it into action fast. What do you say to those customers? What is VMware doing with AWS, with cloud to make those innovation strategies not only plausible, but actionable? That's a great question, John. We focused our energy before even COVID started as we prepared for this year, going into sales kickoffs and our fiscal year around five priorities. Number one was enabling the world to be multi-cloud, private cloud and public cloud. And clearly our partnership here with Amazon is you know, the best example of that. And they are our preferred cloud partner. Secondly, building uh, modern apps with microservices and cloud native, what we call app modernization. Thirdly, uh, which is a key part of the multi-cloud is building out the entire network stack, data center networking, the firewalls, the load balancing, nest web. So that, I'd call that cloud network. Number four, the modernization of the workplace with a digital workspace solution, Workspace ONE. And five, intrinsic security from all aspects of security, network, endpoint, and cloud. So those five priorities were what we began to think through organize our portfolio, we call them solution pillars. And you know, uh, for uh, any of your viewers who are interested, there's a five minute version of the VMware story around those five pillars that you can watch on, on YouTube that I did. You just search for Sanjay Poonen and five minute story. But then COVID hit us and we said, okay, we got to take these strategies now and make them more actionable. Exactly your question, right? So a subset of that portfolio of five began to become more actionable because it's pointless going and talking about stuff and it's like, hey, listen guys, you know, I, my house is on fire. I don't care about the curtains and all the wonderful art. Uh, you got to help me through this crisis. So a subset of that portfolio became high level. What was those? Think about now your laptop at home or your endpoint at home. People wanted, in a, you know, on top of their Zoom call or, you know, surrounding the Zoom call, a virtual desktop managed easily. So we began to see Workspace ONE getting a lot of interest from our customers, especially the VDI part of that portfolio. Secondly, that laptop at home needed to be secured. Traditional old legacy AV solutions that work enter Carbon Black. So Workspace One plus Carbon Black, one and two. Third, that laptop at home needs network acceleration because we want, we're dialoguing here, John, we don't want any latency. Enter SD-WAN. So the trifactor of Workspace One, Carbon Black, and Velo Cloud, that began to see even more interest and we began to hone in our portfolio around those three. So that's an example of where you have a general strategy, but then you apply it to take action in the midst of a crisis. And then I say, listen, that trifecta, let's just go and present what we can do. We call that the, the business continuity or resilient or resilience business resilience part of our portfolio. We began to start talking to customers and saying, here's our business continuity solution. Here's what we could do to help you. And we targeted hospitals, schools, um, you, know, um, you know, governments, pharmacies, retailers, the ones who are on the yeah. front line of this and said, again, that line I said earlier, we want to be a digital first responder to you. You are the real first responder. Right before this call, I got off a CIO call with uh, the CIO of a major hospital in the uh, Northeast area. I mean, what, what gives me great joy, John, is the fact that we are serving them. Their beds are busting at the scene and serving patients. And ransomware you know, is a huge problem. You got, you we're got serving them. Against them. Great stuff there. Sanjay, I was just on a call this morning with a bunch of folks in the security industry, thought leaders, it was in DC. Some generals were there, some real thought leaders trying to figure out security policy around bio security, COVID-19, um, and in this invisible disruption. And um, they were equating it to, you know, the, uh, like World War 
the world wars, big, big inflection point. And one of the generals said, in those times of crisis, you need alliances. So I got to ask you, COVID-19 is impactful. It's going to have a serious impact on the critical nature of it. Like you said, the house is on fire. I don't want with the curtains. Alliances matter more than ever when you need to come together. You guys have an ecosystem. Amazon's got an ecosystem. This is going to be a really important test to the alliances out there. How do you view that as you look forward? You need the alliances to be successful to compete and, and win in the new world as this invisible enemy, if you will, or disruptor happens. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I'll answer in a second, just for your viewers. Uh, I, I sneezed, okay? I've been on your show dozens of times, John, but in your live show, I mean, if I sneezed, you'd hear the loud noise. The good news of digital is I can mute myself when a sneeze is about to happen. <laughs> uh, and we were able to continue the conversation. So these are some side benefits of the digital part of it. But coming to your question on, on line, super important. Ecosystems are how the world run around. Uh, united we stand, divided we fall. We have made ecosystems, you know, I've always used this phrase internally at VMware, you know, sort of like Isaac Newton. We see clearly because we stand on the shoulders of giants. So VMware is always able to be bigger of a company if we stand on the shoulders of bigger giants. Who were those companies 20 years ago when Diane started the company? It was the hardware um, economy of Intel and then HP and Dell, at the time IBM, now Lenovo, Cisco, Net, Cisco NetApp, EMC. Uh, today, the new hardware companies, Amazon, Azure, Google, whoever have you, we were very, I think, you know, uh, prescient, if you would, to think about that uh, and build a strategic partnership with Amazon three, four years ago. I mentioned on your show before, Andy's a close friend, uh, he was a classmate of at Harvard Business School. Pat, myself, Raghu really got close to Andy and Matt Garman and Mike Clavel and several members of the team, Teresa Carlson, and began to build a partnership that I think is one of the most incredible success stories uh, of a partnership. Um, and you know, Dell's kind of been a really strong partner with us on private cloud. Having now Amazon in the public cloud has been seminal. We do regular meetings and build deep integration of VMware Cloud and AWS is not some Barney announcement two, three years ago. It's deep engineering between, uh, you know, Matt's now in a different role, but in his pre previous role, that and people like Mark Lohmeyer and our team. Yeah. And that deep engineering allows us to now tell customers this simple statement, which both VMware and Amazon reps tell their customers today. If you have a workload running on vSphere and you want to move that to Amazon, the best place, the preferred place for that is VMware Cloud and Amazon. If you try to refactor that, onto native EC2, it's a waste of time and money. The best place for, so to have the entire army of VMware and Amazon telling customers that statement is a huge step because it tells customers, we have 70 million virtual machines running on-prem. If customers are looking to move those workloads to Amazon, the best place for that is VMware Cloud and AWS. And we have some incredible customer case studies. Freddie Mac was at VMworld last year. IHS Market was at VMworld last year talking about it. Those are two examples and many more starting So we would like to have every VMware and Amazon customer that's thinking about VMware uh, to look at this partnership as one of the best in the industry and say very similar to what Andy, I think, said on stage at the time of this announcement, it doesn't have to be now a trade-off between public and private cloud. You can get the best of both worlds. Great, that's great. what we're trying to that's do a, here. That's a great point. So I want to get your thoughts on leadership as we look at COVID-19, one of our tracks we're going to be promoting heavily on thecube.net and our sites around how to manage through this crisis. Uh, Andy Jassy was quoted on the Fireside Chat, which is coming up here in North America, but I saw it yesterday in New Zealand time as I time shifted over there. It's a, it's a two way, two door, two, uh, it's a two sided door versus a one sided door. That was kind of his theme, got to be able to go both ways. Um, and I want to get your thoughts because you might know what you're doing in certain contexts, but if you don't know where you're going, you got to adjust your tactics and strategies to match that. And there's an old expression, if you don't know where you're going, every road will take you there. Okay, and so a lot of enterprise CXOs or CEOs have to start thinking about what they, where they want to go with their business. This is the growth strategy. Then you got to understand which roads to take. Your thoughts on this, I mean, obviously we've been thinking it's cloud native, but if I'm a decision maker, I want to make sure I have an architecture that's going to carry me forward to the future. I need to make sure that I know where I'm going so I know what road I'm on versus not knowing where I'm going and every road looks good. So your thoughts on, on leadership and what people should be thinking around knowing what their destination is and then the roads to take. John, I think it's the most important question in this time. Great leaders are born through crisis, whether it's Winston Churchill, Charles de Gaulle, Roosevelt, 
any of the leaders since then in any country, Mahatma Gandhi in India, the country I grew up, uh, Nelson Mandela, MLK. I mean, all of these folks were born through crisis, sometimes severe crisis. They had to go to jail. They were born through wars. Uh, I would say, listen, similar to the people you talked about, yeah, there's elements of this crisis that's similar to World War II. I was talking to my 80-year-old father. He's, he's doing well. I said, when was the world like this? He said, Second World War. I don't think this crisis is going to last six years. It might be six or 12 months, but I really don't think it'll be six years. No, even the, the, the healthcare professionals aren't. So we, what do we learn through this crisis? We have to, it's a test of our leadership. And uh, leaders are, are made or broken during this time. I would just give a few uh, you know, guides to leaders. This is something that, you know, Andy's a great leader, Pat, myself, we all are thinking through ways by which we can exercise this. Think of Sully Sullenberger, um, who landed that plane on the Hudson. Um, did he know when he flew that Airbus, US Airways Airbus, that you know, a few flock of birds were gonna get in his engine and that he was going to have to land his plane in the Hudson? No. But he was making decisions quickly. And what did he exude to his the rest of his, you know, his co-pilot and to the rest of the staff? Calmness and confidence and appropriate communication. And I think it's really important as leaders, first off, that we communicate, 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 communicate to our employees. First, our, our obligation is first to our, our employees. It could be our whole uh, our family first, and then, of course, to our uh, company employees, all 30,000 uh, at VMware, and I'm sure similarly Andy does it to his whatever 60, 70,000 in AWS. Um, and then you want to be able to communicate to them authentically and with clarity. You know, people are going to be reading between the lines of everything you say. Uh, so one of the things I've sought to do with my team, all the front office uh, functions report to me, is do uh, half an hour Zoom video conferences in the time zone that's convenient to them. So Japan, China, India, Europe, in their time zone. So if it's 10 o'clock my time because it's convenient to Japan. And it's just 10 minutes of me speaking of what I'm seeing in the world, empathizing with them, but listening to them for 20 minutes. That is communication, uh, authentically uh, and with clarity. Okay? Uh, and then turn your attention your, uh, your employees, because they're just, you know, we're going stir crazy sitting at home. I get it. Um, and we've got to abide by the ordinances, of, you know, whatever country we're in. Turn your attention to your customers. I've gotten to be actually more productive during this time in having um, more customer conference calls, video conference calls on Zoom or whatever platform with them. And I'm looking at this now as an opportunity to engage in a new way. I have to be better prepared. Like I said, these are shorter conversations. They're not as long. Good news, I don't have to fly all that place. That's better for my family, better for the carbon emission of the world, and also probably better for my life long term. And then the third thing I would say is pick one area that you can learn and improve. For me, the last few years, two, three years, it's been security. I wanted to get the company into security. As you saw today, we've announced a MOBU. So, you know, so I helped architect the acquisition of Carbon Black, very similar to kind of the moves I made six years ago around AirWatch, very key part to, to all of our focus to getting more into security. And I made it a personal goal that this year, at the start of the year, before COVID, I was going to meet 1,000 CISO in the Fortune 1000 Global 2000. Okay, guess what? COVID happens. And quite frankly, that goal's got a little easier because it's much easier for me to meet a lot more people on Zoom video conferences. I could probably do five, 10 per day. Uh, and if there's you know 200 working days in a day, I can easily get there if I average about five per day. Uh, and sometimes I'm meeting them. In so maybe we can get you on the cube more often too, because you have access to exactly. video cameras. So that's my my uh, that is my growth mindset for this year, right? So pick a growth mindset area, right? Um, we when Satya Nadella puts this pretty well. You, you move from being a know it all to a learn it all, and that's the mindset. Great company, uh, Andy has that same philosophy for Amazon. I think the great leaders right now who are running these cloud companies have that growth mindset. Pick an area that you can grow in this time. And you will find ways to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll be able to learn online and then be able to teach in some fashion. So I think you know, communicate uh, effectively, authentically, turn your attention to serving your customers and then pick some growth area that you can learn yourself. And then we will come out of this crisis collectively, individuals and as partners like VMware and Amazon, and then collectively as a society, I believe we'll come out strong. Awesome, great great stuff, great insight there, Sanjay. I really appreciate you sharing that leadership. Um, back to more of the technical questions around leadership uh, is cloud native. It's clear that there's going to be a line in the, in the, on the sand, if you will, it's going to be a right side of history. People are going to have to be on the right side of history. And I, I believe it's cloud, cloud native. Um, you're starting to see this immersion. You guys have some news. You just announced today, you acquired a Kubernetes security startup um, 
around Kubernetes. Obviously Kubernetes needs security. It's one of those key new enablers, disruptive enablers out there. Cloud native is a path that is a destination opportunity for people to think about um, why that acquisition, why that company, why is VMware making this move? Yeah, we felt as we talked about our plans in security, uh, backing up to kind of things I talked about in my last few appearances on your show at VMworld, uh, when we announced Carbon Black, was we felt the security industry was broken because there was too many point vendors. And we figured there would be, you know, three to five control points, network, endpoint, cloud, where we could play a much more pronounced role at moving a lot of these point vendors I describe this as you know not having to force our customers to go to a doctor and say, I've got to eat 5,000 tablets to get healthy. You make it part of your diet, you make it part of the infrastructure. So how do we do that? With network security, we're off to our, the races. We're doing a lot more in data center networking, firewall, load balancing, SD-WAN. I mean, really the reality is we can eat into a lot of the point vendors there that are just doing pieces of it. And quite frankly, what's happened to us, very gratifying the network security area, you've seen the last few months, some firewall vendors are buying SD-WAN players, kind of following our strategy. That's a tremendous validation of the fact that the network security space is being disrupted. Okay, move to endpoint security. Part of the reason we acquired Carbon Black was to unify the client side. Workspace One and Carbon Black should come together, and we're well on the way of doing that. Make Carbon Black agentless on the server side with vSphere. We're well on the way of doing that. You'll see that very, very soon. By the way, both those things are something that the traditional endpoint players can't do. And then, bring out new forms of workload. You know, servers that are virtualized by VMware is just one form of work. What are other workloads? AWS, the other public clouds, and containers. Containers is just another workload. And we've look, been looking at container security for a long time. What we didn't want to do was buy another static analysis player, another platform and replatform it. We felt that we could get great technology. We have incredible brand around containers now. I mean, it's sort of like Red Hat and us, that the only two companies who are doing Kubernetes scales. It's not any of these endpoint players who understand containers. So at Kubernetes, VMware's got an incredible brand and relevance and, and, and knowledge there. The networking part of it, service mesh, which is kind of a key component also of this. We've been working with, with Google and, uh, and others on Istio and service mesh. We've got a lot of IP there that the traditional endpoint players, Symantec, McAfee, Trend, CrowdStrike, don't know either tens, uh, sorry, Kubernetes or service mesh well. We add now container security into this. We really distinguish ourselves further from the traditional endpoint players with a uh, bringing together um, not just the endpoint platform that can do containers, but also Kubernetes uh, service mesh. So why is that important? As people think about their future in containers, they'll want to do this at the runtime level, not at the static um, level. They'll want to do it at build time and they'll want to have it integrated with some of their networking capabilities like service mesh. Who better to think about that IP and that evolution than VMware. And now we bring, I think it's 12 to 14 people we're bringing in from this, from this acquisition, uh, several of them in Israel, some of them here in, in Palo Alto, and they will build that platform into the tech um, that VMware has onto the Carbon Black Cloud, and we will, we will deliver that this year. It's not going to be years from now. Did you guys uh, talk about the- Platform and our capability, and then we can bring the best of Carbon Black with Tanzu, service mesh, and even future innovation. Like for example, there's a big movement going around this, this thing called Open Policy Agent, OPA, which is an open source effort around policy management. Uh, you should expect us to embrace that. There could be aspects of OPA that also play into the future of this um, uh, container security movement. So yeah. I think this is a really great move uh, for Patrick and his team. I'm very excited. When he came, Patrick is the CEO of Carbon Black and the leader of that security business unit. And he came to me and said, listen, one of the areas we need to move in is container security because it's the number one request I'm hearing from our CISOs and customers. I said, go go ahead, Patrick, find out who are the best player, play, player you could acquire, but you have to triangulate that strategy with the Tanzu team and the NSX team. And when you have a unified strategy, what we should go, we'll go and make the right acquisition. And, and, and I'm noticed, proud of what he was able to announce today. And I noticed you guys on the release didn't talk about the acquisition amount. Was it not material? Was it a small amount? Or? Yes, I mean, it's not, we don't disclose uh, small, it's a tuck-in acquisition. You should think of this as really bringing us some tech and some talent yeah. and being able to uh, build that into the core of the platform uh, of Carbon Black. Carbon Black was the real big move we made. Yeah. We, we uh, are looking to, usually what we do, you saw this with AirWatch, right? Anchor on a fairly big move. You know, we paid, I think, two, 2.1 billion for Carbon Black and then build and build and build on top of that partner very heavily. We didn't talk about that, which is time we could talk about it. We announced today 
uh, a security alliance with the top uh, SIM players in what's called a SOC alliance. Who was announced in there? Uh, Splunk, uh, IBM Q Radar, Google Chronicle, yeah. Sumo Logic, and Exabeam. Five of the biggest SIM players are embracing VMware in endpoint security, saying Common Black is who we want to work with. Nobody else has that type of partnership. So build, partner, and then buy. But buy is always very carefully thought through. We're not one of these companies uh, like CA of the past that just bought every company and then they becomes a graveyard of dead acquisition. Our view is we're very disciplined about how we think about acquisition. Acquisitions for us are often the last resort because we prefer to build and partner. But sometimes for time to market reasons, uh, we acquire. When we acquire, it's thoughtful, it's well organized within VMware, and we take care of our people because we want, I mean, listen, what, why do acquisitions fail? Because the good people leave. Yeah. So we're excited about this team, you know, the team in Israel uh, and the team in Palo Alto that come from, from Octarine. We're going to integrate them rapidly into the platform. Uh, and this is a good evidence of VMware investing more in security. In our Q3 earnings call, uh, John, I said, uh, sorry, we said that the security business was a billion dollar business at, at VMware already, primarily from network, but some from endpoint. This is evidence of us putting more fuel behind that fire. Yeah. Uh, it's only been six, seven months and Patrick's made his first acquisition uh, inside Carbon Black. So you're going to see us investing more in security. It's an important priority for the company. And I expect us to be a very prominent player in these three pillars, network security, endpoint security. Endpoint is both the client and the workload and cloud. Network, endpoint, cloud. They're the three areas where we think there's lots of room for innovation and security. Well, we will be watching, we'll be reporting and uh, analyzing the moves. Great playbook, by the way, love that. Organic partnering and then key acquisitions which you build around. It's a, it's a great playbook. I think it's very relevant for this time. Uh, the most important question I have to ask you, Sanjay, and this is a personal question because you're the leader of VMware. I noticed that um, we all know you're into music. Uh, you've been putting music online, kind of a virtual band. You've also hired uh, a CUBE alumni, Vittorio Varengo from McAfee, who also puts up music. You got some musicians, but you kind of know how to do the digital moves there. So the question is, <laughs> will the music at VMworld this year be virtual? Oh man, uh, Vittorio is actually an even better musician than me. I'm so, I'm, I'm excited about his marketing gifts, but right? I'm also excited to watch him. Yeah, you've heard him sing. He's got a voice that's somewhat similar to Sting. Yeah. So um, we, we, just for fun, uh, in our Diwali, which is an Indian celebration in uh, last year, uh, Tom Korn, myself, and a, a wonderful uh, lady named Divya, who's got a beautiful voice, had sung a song, which was uh, off the soundtrack of the Bollywood movie, Secret Superstar. Um, and we we just for fun decided to record that in our three separate homes uh, and put that out on YouTube. You can, you, can, you can listen to just a two or three minute run and it kind of went a little bit viral. Um, and I was thinking to myself, hey, if this is one way by which we can let the Gamer community know that, hey, you know what, uh, art conquers, uh, conquers COVID-19, uh, you can do music even socially distant and bring out the spirit of VMware, which is community. So we might build on that idea. Victoria and I were talking about that last night and saying, hey, maybe we do a virtual uh, music kind of concert of a, you know maybe 10 or 15 or 20 voices in the various different countries, record piece of a, of a song and music and, and, and put it out there. I think these are just ways by which we're having fun yeah. in a virtual setting. Uh, where people get to see a different side of VMware, where we're trying, I mean, and the intent here, we're all amateurs, and we're not like great. I mean, there are going to be mistakes in this music. If you listen to that audio, it sounds a little tinny because yeah. we're recording it off our iPhone and our iPad microphone, uh, but we'll do the best we can. The point is just to show the human spirit and to show that we care. And at the end of the day, we are all, see the, 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 the COVID-19 virus has no prejudice on color of skin. Or, or nationality or ethnicity. It's, it's affecting the whole world. How are you uh, we all went about... into the tunnel at different times. We will come out of this tunnel together and we will be a stronger human fabric when we're done. With this. Give we us an shall update absolutely on... overcome. Sanjay, give us a quick update to end the segment on uh, your thoughts around VMworld. It's one of the biggest events. We look forward to it. It's the only event left standing that theCUBE's been to every year of the Cube's existence. We're looking forward to being part of the Cube virtual. It's been announced, it's virtual. What are some of the thinking going, thinking going on at the highest levels within the, the VMware uh, community around how you're going to handle VMworld this year? Listen, uh, uh, when we began to think about it, we had to obviously give our customers and folks enough notice. So we didn't want to just spring that sometime in the summer. Uh, so we, we decided to think through it carefully. 
uh, I asked Robin uh, to really, Robin, our CMO, to talk to many of the other CMOs in the industry. Uh, good news is all of these are friends of ours, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, uh, Salesforce, Adobe, uh, you know, and, and even some smaller companies, IBM did theirs. And, and if they were in the first half of the year, they had to go virtual because we're sheltered in place and IBM did theirs, uh, Okta did theirs. And we began to watch how they were doing this. We're kind of in the second half because we were August, September. And we just sensed a lot of hesitancy from our customers and wanted to get on a plane to come here. And even if we got, you know, just 500 or 1,000 or a few thousand, it wasn't going to be the same. And there would always be that sort of, you know, even if we were getting back to that, some worry. So we figured we'd do something that might be semi-digital. In other words, we may have some people in the room, but the bulk of it is going to be digital. Uh, and it's we changed the dates to be a little later. I think it's September 28, 29. Tonight now it's all public now. We announced that. And we're going to make it a great program. I mean, in some sense, it's like we're becoming TV producers. I told our team, we've got to be like Disney or ESPN or, uh, you know, whoever your favorite show is, YouTube, and, and, and produce a really good uh, several-hour program that has got a different way in which digital content is provided. Um, smaller snippets, very interesting speakers, great brand names, uh, make the content clear, crisp, and compelling. And if we do that, this will be, I don't know, maybe it's the new norm uh, for some period of time where it might be forever. I don't know. We're all learning. Um, you know, in the past, we had huge conferences that were busting 50, 70, 100,000. And then after the dot com kind of, you know, era, those all shrunk to like smaller conferences. And now with the advent of companies like a Amazon and Salesforce, uh, we have huge events that, uh, like VMworld, are big events. We may move to an environment that's a lot more digital. I don't know what the, the future of, of in-presence physical conferences are. Yeah. But well, we, You're like others, and we're, we're working very closely with AWS in terms of their future with reInvent, what Microsoft's doing with Ignite, what Google's doing with Next, uh, what Salesforce is going to do with Dreamforce. All those four companies are good partners of ours. We'll study this. We'll work together as a community, the CMOs of all those com companies, and we'll come together with something that's a very good digital experience for our customers. That's really what counts. And if they can, today I did a webinar with a with a with a partner. Okay? Yeah. Uh, typically, when we did a, a briefing in our briefing center, twenty people came. There were a hundred people attending this. Uh, I got a lot more participation in this QBR that I did with this particular SI partner, one of the top SIs in the world, in an online session with them. than I would have gotten if they'd all come to follow up. That's goodness. Should we take the best of that world and some, uh, you know, physical presence? Maybe in the future we'll see how. how it content goes. quality. I mean, you know, you know, content. Content quality drives everything online. Good exactly. engagement creates community. That's a nice flywheel. I think you guys will figure it out. You got a lot of great minds there, and of course, the Cube Virtual will be helping out as we can. We're and we're re we, we're rethinking. We count too. on that, John. We're gonna we open minded to new ideas, and hey, whatever's the best content we can deliver, whether it's Cube or with you guys or whoever. We're looking forward to it. Sanjay, thanks for spending the time on this CUBE keynote coverage of uh, AWS Summit. Since it's digital, we can do longer programs. We can do more diverse content. We've got great customer practitioners coming up. Talk about their journey, their innovation strategies. Sanjay Poonin, COO of VMware. Thank you for taking the, your precious time out of your day today. Thank you, John. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, more CUBE virtual, CUBE digital coverage of AWS Summit 2020, thecube.net as we're streaming. And of course, tons of videos on uh, innovation, DevOps and more, scaling cloud, scaling on-premise, hybrid cloud and more. We've got great interviews coming up. Stay with us all day coverage. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.